Here are 10 things to watch out for when buying or owning a Rockwood A-frame camper and how to deal with most of them. I've owned this A122S ESP model for over two years and have had numerous issues with it. Stick around to the end and you'll be surprised at how easily I finally resolved every one of these issues for good. Last night it poured rain all night and I have a leak in the trailer. It's the second one now and I thought I had this all cleared up uh, by sealing all the windows prior to leaving on the trip. But apparently not. There is a steady drip that was coming down here last night on the window. And so uh, I've temporarily had to put a plastic garbage bag over top of the window. So here's my temporary solution to the problem of this leak. I've just laid a plastic garbage bag over top of this and it sticks really well to the trailer. So hopefully that's uh, done a, a enough of a job just to keep the majority of the water off of this unit. Just uh, a couple of days ago, I had this big flood inside uh, on the bed and um, I thought, you know, I got to get this fixed right away because I'm going to be gone for like on this trip for two and a half months and there's no way I'm going to put up with this leaking nonsense. So I went and bought this roll of, um, it's, it's like a Gorilla Tape. It's a four inch wide black tape and it's uh, super sticky, this stuff. Like you, you cut it to the shape that you want and then you peel off this um, clear plastic backing and, and once you press it in place, like it's, it's stuck on there. While I was in Dawson City, Yukon on my 10 week trip up to the Arctic in the summer and fall of 2023, I attempted a temporary repair of the leaky roof using a duct tape material made by Gorilla, which ultimately failed. Here's an example of some of the repairs that I've had to do to this window here. This is um, uh, Gorilla tape that I've had to use and I put a, a coating of Dicor self-leveling on here as well. Even with the Dicor self-leveling, it still leaked. Then I had to put this tape on here and I've got some other Gorilla tape in some other locations as well. I'm gonna show you how to finally repair your leaky roofs on the A-frame camper using Eternabond roof seal. Before applying the Eternabond tape, make sure you strip away as much of the old tape as you can and clean the surface with sudsy water, a stiff scrub brush, and some elbow grease. Roll out the Eternabond tape and cut it to length. I recommend doing this in the shade or on a cool day as the sticky backing makes it much more difficult to cut and apply when it's warm. I did the first two windows in the direct sunlight and made the installation much more challenging. Apply the tape carefully as once it sticks, it becomes almost impossible to reposition without damaging it. Once it's in place, use a smooth piece of plastic to smooth down the edges and to ensure it evenly sticks to all surfaces. Removing air bubbles with this sticky tape is nearly impossible. You can see I've left a few air bubbles on the left and should have cleaned these areas up better before applying the tape by cutting them down a bit, but by this time it was too late. On the large window I resorted to using some painter's tape applied ahead of time to give me a straight line to use when applying the longer pieces of Eternabond tape. This just happened to one of the shocks that or the assist lifts that help me bring the roof of this A-frame camper up. Now that is gonna be an expensive repair and yet another example of how cheaply made these particular units are. This is shocking and should never happen. Can you imagine this whole system under stress is held together by five little screws. Not a metal plate with bolts, but with screws directly into the material. Of course this thing is going to break over time. I was looking for a permanent fix to this problem and opted to make a metal sandwich to attach the gas assist shock to. I bought a sheet of metal from Home Depot and cut out three inch squares as the attachment plates. It helps having a good friend with all the tools. Here is the three inch by three inch steel plate that I cut out. 
It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And after I've painted it on both sides, and then after drilling the five holes necessary. On the inside of the trailer, this is where I've attached the plate that holds the gas shock mechanism in place. Those are just five stainless steel bolts that go right through and that'll hold it in place, hopefully forever. So all along this line here is a very long hinge that this wall folds up and down. So this is the gable end to the camper and it folds down this way. And inside that long hinge is a pin that holds the two sections together. Now just look what happens to that pin every once in a while. That pin decides to work its way loose. It's coming right out here and I, I can't bang it back in. So I have to keep cutting this shorter and shorter. Here's the hinge pin that is working its way loose. You can see it kind of does jiggle a little here and I don't know if I can put some pressure on it to maybe push it back in a bit. In my previous video on the pros and cons of what to look out for when buying an A-frame camper, you will have seen that I've had a problem with this back wall here. And in particular, underneath this latch, the wall was bent. I'm gonna show you how I had to fix that. I had to run a long piece of metal. I'm just gonna lower this wall. The entire length, this entire length here is an extra piece of metal that I had to add on because there was a, it was cracked right at that point right there, right across from there to there, internally cracked. So I've had to spend about 700 bucks at an RV repair place. I did both sides just to make it look even. I was added a bit of weight. That's all right, so long as it's repaired. And again, it just sort of a tribute to the incredibly cheaply made materials or cheap materials that they use to build these things and then you look at the design the window is so large that of course when this thing is flat in the down position this wall and the other side too they just bounce up and down if you go on any kind of a bump and it flexes and naturally these are the weak points right on the corners right over here and right over there and they're going to flex and they're going to bend and they're going to actually eventually break. This door actually leaks and it leaks badly. What it leaks is dust. The dust comes through. You can see the dust on the, on the door frame over here. It's because the door doesn't fit very well. And you can see all the dust here in the hinges. That's an issue. This door just does not fit properly. You can see that there's a bit of a gap in here, it's a bit loose, and the rubber seal here just doesn't really have the right fit. So check out the dust here. That's after going on a dirt road for about two hours today. It's just everywhere. Check out, even with the seals on there, it's still leaking dust. When driving down dusty roads, you'll find that dust gets into every opening of these trailers. If you travel a lot of gravel roads, the dust can get quite bad, and you may want to consider a method for keeping this out to avoid a huge amount of time to clean this out or damaging components. On my 10-week trip up to the Arctic, I anticipated driving over 2,000 kilometers or over 1,200 miles on dirt roads. I wasn't about to spend days cleaning or fixing my trailer because of dust intrusion. I had already incurred enough dust intrusion from a previous camping trip and needed to put a stop to it. After going on several Facebook groups and asking others for a solution, 
I came up with the idea of adding plastic covers that can easily be removed using Velcro fasteners. I know you shouldn't cover vents when they are in use, such as the water heater or furnace vent, but these were meant to be on only while driving and were removed when I got to camp. The lower fridge vent cover was kept on the entire trip to prevent the fridge pilot flame from constantly blowing out while traveling, and the top vent cover was never used to give it a constant air supply. Here are all the vents installed on the trailer. I put them on in the winter during storage to keep out bugs and critters. Well, nice to have light coming in, but we've got the two big windows on either side. And honestly, you can't see through this thing anyways. Uh, they're so smoked out and they get so gritted from uh, road, road grit and dirt that they just get completely sandblasted and you just cannot even see through these things at all. To remove the haziness of the plastic windows, I bought a bottle of Novus Plastic Polish 2, which is a fine scratch remover. I applied this with a buffing wheel and after only a few minutes on each window, I could finally see out of them again. This was the perfect product to use for this application. The other thing that I found rather goofy on this trailer is the thermostat here. The buttons on this thing just go squirrely. Sometimes it'll go as soon as you touch the up down buttons to get the temperature right. Now it's back on, on degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this morning when I turned the heater on because it was cold in here when I first got up, it was on Celsius. I, it, this thing is really sensitive and it's just kind of goofy. I just think that this thing's going to go at some point in time and it looks like an expensive fix. So just give me the old slider, you know, the, the thing with the little mercury ball inside it, like, you know, you get in the house. That's all you really need. Other thing that drives me crazy is this kind of, the finishing on here is is made of, I don't know what it is, it's the thinnest sheet of, of film of some sort, like a fake wood pattern over top of the, the particle board. And I know why they do it, it's to keep the weight down and so on. But this material here, you just touch it. And practically with anything, it's just going to, you can see it's starting to chip off here. And there's a whole bunch of little wear and tear, things like that all over. And that sort of thing just kind of drives me crazy. To resolve this, I used a brown felt marker and covered the affected areas. It wasn't the right color, but from a standing distance, you could barely notice the difference and was at least better than before. This is underneath one of the dinette seats and where the hot water tank, the heater, and some plumbing is as well, and also where the fuse box is. Check out this spaghetti of wires in here. I mean, really, that's pretty bad to have that all in this kind of condition. That's just an embarrassment. The manufacturer should be ashamed of themselves for throwing stuff like this together. You can't even find anything in here if you had to. After spending over $1,000 to fix all of the issues with this trailer, I finally found a permanent solution to all the problems I've had with it. After spending over 60 hours fixing and cleaning this unit, I sold it to a mechanic that had experience with previous A-frame campers. Thanks for the memories, trailer, but good riddance. <laughs>